Yesterday, Judge, this defendant uh, methodically began an evil plan of mass murder and rape in the city of Brockton, targeting victims that he identified as non-whites. This evil plan, by his own admission, uh, encompassed the defendant armed with a handgun, killing as many Jews, blacks, and Hispanics as humanly possible yesterday before killing himself. He indicated he was going to kill people hopefully until approximately 6.30 p.m. when he would enter a synagogue and kill Jewish people before shooting himself in the head. In preparation for this hate crime, just after noontime yesterday, the defendant armed himself with a 9 millimeter handgun and 200 rounds of ammunition, both of which he had bought on the street illegally. He also loaded a backpack that had two sets of handcuffs, a blindfold, and a gag along with a hammer. His first indication of police was that he was going to kill his first victim, an ex-neighbor named Selma Goncalves, by stealth, indicating the use of the hammer or perhaps his own hands. After that uh, first murder of an innocent victim, his plan was to kill as many non-whites that he saw throughout the city of Brockton. Just after noontime, he got in his black van and headed to 103 Clinton Street, which was an address that he himself had lived at on the second floor for approximately 10 years. He knocked on Selma Goncalves' apartment door, and the door was answered by her older sister. I'm not going to name her. She is a victim uh, of a pending rape charge. This 22-year-old uh, woman, Your Honor, answered the door. The defendant claimed that he was having car trouble and asked to use the phone. She hesitated, didn't speak English very well, so based on his own statement, he produced a gun and pointed it at her. He was able to easily overpower the much smaller woman and handcuffed her hands behind her back. At this point, he proceeded to sodomize this poor girl for 20 to 25 minutes in her own apartment. He indicated that he sodomized her on the living room floor, then moved her into the bedroom. At that point, he heard a knock on the door. Selma Goncalves, the victim's younger sister had come home and was knocking on the door. The defendant claimed to police that when he opened the door, she was armed with some kind of sharp instrument. She saw the defendant. She saw the gun in his hand and attempted to flee. According to his statement, at this point, he shot her a few times in the back. He then returned to the apartment where the first victim, 22-year-old girl, was cowering on the floor holding a stuffed teddy bear. At this point, he shot her through the teddy bear multiple times. He then stated to police that he walked back to his van and began to reload his handgun so they continue with the killing spree. At this point, Your Honor, a couple of uh, brave civilians get involved in the case. We have reports from an individual driving by as well as a young man on a bike that they observed. The first victim come out of the house, uh, which would be Selma Goncalves, and collapsed on the roadway suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. They, of course, ran over and tried to give her some aid. Uh, one of these individuals was white, and one of these individuals uh, was not white. At this point, the first victim, who was raped, also was able to make it out of the apartment covered with blood. The defendant was in his van reloading his handgun at this point. According to witnesses, and according to the defendant himself, while seated in the van, he then pointed the gun at the group that was offering aid to some of the gun cops who was dying on the sidewalk, and fired several more shots in their direction, attempting to kill the non-white person who was tending to sell them. The defendant then backed up and drove down Clinton Street, again, based on his own admissions, attempting to find more non-white people to murder. Unfortunately, he passed uh, the second victim, a 69-year-old male identified, Your Honor, as Arlindo, the peanut gone cows, I'm sorry, 72 years of age, who was a known homeless man in the area of Clinton Street. In fact, the defendant stated to police that he knew the homeless man from his time living there and seen him on uh, several occasions pushing a cart around filled with cans. As he pulled up to Mr. Goncalves, he slowed down, stopped his van, and by his statement, got out of the van with uh, his handgun, walked up to point blank range, and shot this man in the head. He said he was surprised that he didn't go down immediately and shot him a second time in the back. He then got back into his van, and at this point, uh, because of the bravery of some civilians who followed him and got his license plate number and were actually on the phone with 911 while the second shooting took place, the Brockton police 
began to respond and the GBC was put out for a black van with a particular license plate. Brockton offices responded to the scene judge where they found uh, what essentially was a bloodbath out in front of 103 Clinton Street. Some were gun cows uh, suffering from gunshot wounds down on the ground. The first victim who was raped was suffering multiple gunshot wounds, including a wound to the head. She was rushed to an area hospital and then med flighted into Boston. Luckily, uh, this young lady fought for her life yesterday and at this point is in critical, <coughs> stable condition. The defendant continued down the road and Brockton police picked him up a uh, short distance away, squatting the black van with the same license plate number. Uh, a chase ensued during which time the defendant, again by his own admission and eyewitness accounts by the police, shot at not one but two different police cruisers striking him. The first cruiser he shot at, the uh, bullet went through the windshield and narrowly missed the police officer by hitting his driver's side seat. Uh, a second officer who was at his lunch break heard the uh, call of an oncoming speeding car uh, leaving the shooting scene and he attempted to blockade the road, get out of his car and uh, was also fired upon several times by this defendant and was forced to return fire. Luckily again, Judge, based on the bravery of the Brockton police, once again putting their lives on the line to protect the public, this defendant's car was brought to a halt when he uh, went through an intersection and hit two other cars head on. Witnesses indicated he was still armed at that time and attempting to fire upon the police. By his own statement, his gun jammed or he ran out of bullets and he ran approximately 100 yards away before tossing the weapon into a snowbank and laying down on the ground where he was taken into custody by Brockton police. I would ask the court, based on the horrific nature of this senseless, mindless, murder spree to hold the defendant without bail, uh, without bail. He is clearly a dangerous man and this was clearly an evil plan that he carried out.